Mars is now considered the best explored planet in the solar system. No other celestial body has been visited by as many probes and robots as the Red Planet, yet we still know so little about our planetary neighbor. The rover's curiosity and perseverance surprise us with new sightings almost every month, and slowly a picture is emerging that Mars will soon be ready for human settlement. Now, let's take a look together at why living conditions on Mars are getting better and what the latest discoveries are that are driving settlement plans. Sit back and be amazed by the most incredible finds NASA has made on Mars. Biological Molecules on Mars In 2022, NASA announced a sensational find. The Perseverance rover found evidence of organic molecules very close to ancient water sources. It was not the first time a rover had discovered an organic-looking substance on the Red Planet, yet this discovery was different. Evidence of biological life in a place where liquid water almost certainly once flowed is a sensation. Even for astrobiologists who have studied Mars for decades, the find was a shock. With its instruments, the Mars rover has the ability to identify organic and chemical substances in rock samples. Scanning the molecules clearly revealed hydrogen atoms with carbon atoms. Carbon is an essential building block for life and could indicate biological activity. Evidence for the presence of sulfates substantiates this suspicion, as sulfates are another clue to life forms. So, are these the first images of the very first extraterrestrial life forms ever sighted? It's very likely, and if the suspicion is confirmed, this discovery will go down in human history. However, some researchers also urge caution. The molecules in the crater could also have been formed by non-organic processes. Scientists will only be able to answer this question with certainty when rock samples are brought back to Earth. And that is precisely what will happen in just a few years. The return mission will begin in 2026 with the Mars Sample Return Mission. Perseverance found the traces of molecules in Jezero Crater, where the rover has been searching for traces of water and life since 2021. The crater probably formed about 3.5 billion years ago. Later, it may have been a crater lake, and sediments of sand, dirt, and salts have accumulated over time. Perseverance's find is believed to be the largest amount of organic molecules recovered on Mars to date. On Earth, molecular compounds like these often occur in fossil sedimentary rocks. Exactly what this means is not yet certain. Are they the first traces of simple organic life? Or are these molecules all we will ever find about life on Mars? It is one of the great mysteries of space exploration whether Mars was inhabited, and if so, to what extent? What is certain is that it once occupied an atmosphere and plenty of flowing water. But that period was millions of years ago, and it's almost impossible today to predict with certainty whether that epoch produced higher life or even plants. If researchers find microorganisms still alive in the subglacial lakes on Mars, or if these microorganisms can be reconstructed based on their legacies, it would be a step forward towards colonizing the planet. Local microorganisms are perfectly adapted to the harsh conditions on Mars, and by studying these microorganisms, we humans can learn how to protect ourselves against the various climatic hazards of the Red Planet. Moxie provides oxygen for settlers. Plans to colonize Mars have made yet another crucial advance. It sounds almost unbelievable, but a device could turn Martian air into oxygen. This would allow the settlers and scientists who will be the first to live on Mars to obtain their breathing air directly from the environment. The device that performs this miracle is called Moxie, and it works by separating oxygen atoms from CO2 molecules. The byproduct is carbon monoxide, which is likely to be easily released into the atmosphere permanently on Mars. Currently, the device is capable of producing up to 10 grams of oxygen per hour. In initial tests, the yield was about 5.4 grams of oxygen per hour. That would be enough to allow an astronaut to breathe for about 10 minutes. It's clear that this technology needs to be improved a long way, but it's only a matter of time. Moxie is a start and is already of great value now because it can extract virtually unlimited amounts of oxygen from the raw materials in the Martian atmosphere. In addition to carbon dioxide, which makes up about 96% of the Martian atmosphere, 
Moxie uses the Martian rock, regolith. A special process is used to extract oxygen from this mineral as well. And in combination with hydrogen, the device can even produce hydrogen fuel from regolith. This, in turn, is intended to serve as a fuel or heating agent on Mars. Elon Musk follows developments. Currently, NASA and SpaceX CEO Elon Musk are eagerly following the scientists' discoveries. Elon Musk wants to send the first humans to Mars as early as 2029, and any progress in basic supplies and security for humans means that this time frame will be met. The Starship spacecraft is currently undergoing intensive testing. It's not yet clear whether Elon Musk's spacecraft will be able to transport sufficient supplies of materials and eventually humans to Mars. The first test flights took place near Earth. Soon the Starship will fly humans to the Moon, and the next step will be material deliveries en route to Mars as part of an unmanned flight. Elon Musk's entrepreneurial spirit and desire to colonize space has left its mark. NASA, under President Barack Obama, resumed an old program to colonize the moon. The Artemis project was promised funds from the Senate, and the first unmanned flights to the moon have already taken place. Artemis is intended to be the launch run for humanity's move into space. The manned lunar station serves as a near-Earth test of how long humans can stay on an extraterrestrial celestial body without suffering long-term damage. The moon is already considered to be largely safe because modern spacecraft can be on site in as little as three days and evacuate people in an emergency. In addition to a lunar station on the surface, Artemis will consist of a space station in orbit around the moon. Both stations are to be permanently manned by humans. If Mars colonization can get underway, the Artemis stations on the moon will serve as intermediate landing sites or refueling stations. If everything goes according to plan, astronauts will land on the lunar surface as part of the Artemis 3 mission in 2025 or 2027. NASA also plans to send a manned space mission to Mars by 2040. Whether NASA and SpaceX will join forces here is currently unclear. What is in store for humans? Neither SpaceX nor NASA will have any problems finding people who want to be settlers in space. In addition to professional astronauts, scientists, doctors, and ordinary people will gradually move into space. Preparations are in full swing. NASA is already training the first astronauts and looking for medical professionals who want to be the first humans to live on the moon. Technical facilities and greenhouses are being tested in Antarctica and other extreme areas. So far, the results are good. Nevertheless, by no means all obstacles have been cleared out of the way. On the moon, the settlers can be supplied very well from the Earth, but the first humans on Mars will be largely on their own. After the flight, the settlers will have to settle on Mars under extremely difficult conditions. No one yet knows how the nervous system and organism of humans will react to the conditions on Mars. According to experts, the first crew will probably land near the Martian equator. The canyons of frozen water in the Valles Marineris would be the perfect landing site. The ice only needs to be melted and water is available for drinking, growing crops, and meeting household needs in almost unlimited quantities. The settlers must permanently wear spacesuits and be supplied with oxygen. Martian air consists of a toxic mixture of carbon dioxide, nitrogen, and argon. There remains the question of the return of the settlers from Mars. If humans can only endure the conditions for a few months or years, crews will have to be replaced regularly. Humans should also be able to leave Mars quickly in an emergency. Elon Musk is planning a complete factory for this, producing rockets as well as the fuel needed for them directly on Mars. This all sounds fantastic and a bit like science fiction, but in just a few years, this could be a reality. Dangers for humans. Of course, with all of this excitement, we also have to ask ourselves how far Mars actually is. Volcanic eruptions on Mars stopped a long time ago. The interior of the planet cooled and solidified, weakening the magnetic field. Solar winds blew away the atmosphere and the remaining water froze. Geological activity has been lower on Mars since then, yet the planet is not dead. Recently, Mars has become more active, and let's put it this way, 
researchers may have noticed more of Mars's activity than was the case before. Everything changed when astronomers examined thousands of images of the equatorial region of Mars. These images were taken between 2006 and 2020 by NASA's Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter. The high-rise camera took the images at an altitude of 300 kilometers above the Martian surface. The magnifications allow researchers to distinguish and study individual objects as small as one meter. The study revealed a large number of landslides and debris avalanches on the slopes of Martian volcanoes. Scientists discovered more than 4,500 traces of boulders showing signs of a strong earthquake. About one-third of the traces were not present in images taken before 2006, suggesting that they were formed later. It's obvious that only very strong subsurface shaking could move these huge boulders. Although there have been signs of mild Martian earthquakes, evidence of shaking of this magnitude has not yet been found on Mars. Mars storms are a known problem. Seasonally, extreme storms rage and stir up the sand and dust on the Martian surface. Currently, researchers are already searching for the landing and settlement sites that offer humans the most safety. As the storms rage across Mars, no place is 100% safe. Presumably, Martian homes that are halfway under the ground and securely anchored to the soil will offer the best conditions in craters or wind-sheltered valleys. Well, would you sign up as a Mars settler under such conditions? Or would you rather stay on the safe and predictable Earth? <laughs>